Hello, my name is Eric Ryer, and on behalf of Teleflex and SIR 2021, I'd like to welcome you to this evening's presentation, Adopting a Powered System for Bone Marrow Aspirations and Biopsies to Enhance Quality and Efficiency in My Practice. Tonight's presenter is Dr. Ankur Garg. Dr. Garg is an assistant professor of radiology in the musculoskeletal imaging division at Northwestern University. He earned his joint MD MBA at the University of Chicago. Dr. Garg completed his residency in diagnostic radiology at the Northwestern University, followed by a one-year musculoskeletal fellowship at UCSF. Dr. Garg has been practicing at Northwestern University for over five years and performs multiple diagnostic and therapeutic procedures in addition to interpreting diagnostic imaging. Dr. Garg is currently the Director of Diagnostic Radiology Residency Program at Northwestern and serves an, an, as an Associate Program Director for the Interventional Radiology Residency. Dr. Garg lives with his wife and two sons in the Lincoln Park neighborhood of Chicago. Please let me welcome Dr. Garg. Great, thanks, Eric. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for taking time to uh, join us this evening to learn about something that I'm very passionate about. Uh, which is this powered system for bone marrow aspirations. Here are some uh, financial disclosures. So I'm a consultant for Teleflex and all the views and opinions that I'm going to be expressing in these slides and in the material are, are, are my own and not those of the university. So a little bit about my experience with the on-control device. Um, I have been back now as faculty at Northwestern, as Eric mentioned, uh, for the past five and a half years. Uh, prior to that, uh, both in training and in private practice, I was used to manual needle systems like such as Bonopti for doing biopsies. Um, I've done well over a thousand cases now in my five years. And I think one big driver um, of that usage for me was that I was an early adopter of the system. I was fortunate that within a few weeks of starting at Northwestern, um, I was introduced to the device. I had the advantage of being introduced to some of the amazing representatives from Teleflex who really kind of walked me through how the device should be used. Um, they scheduled training sessions for me. And I think that was really important uh, for me to kind of become an early adopter and kind of start really my academic career using this device. Um, and now I found that, you know, I use it whenever possible. There, there are almost no bone procedures now that I do without the device. Being at a big academic medical center, I've, I've had the opportunity now to train multiple residents, fellows and faculty, um, you know, over the past five and a half years. So how is the device used in my practice? So the vast majority of the usage comes with bone marrow aspirations and biopsies that we perform. You know, oftentimes these patients come to us because the, the hematology service or their advanced nurse practitioner might have previously failed um, in clinic or at the bedside, failed at getting an appropriate sample um, for what you know for what's required by the pathology team, um, uh, you know, to give the clinical information. And that could be done. That could be because of a variety of reasons. It could be because the patient has challenging anatomy. It could be because the patient um, has a larger body habitus, and as a result, it's hard to get. It's hard to really palpate that posterior iliac crest. A lot of times, patients have had bad experiences uh, related to, to pain or discomfort during the procedure. You know, it's possible that they're very anxious to begin with. So in the, in the IR suite, as many of you know, we have the option to give conscious sedation. And I would say that the vast majority of our patients um, tend to request that. We as radiologists, obviously, we have the luxury of imaging guidance when we do these procedures. And I'll, I'll show you here in a few slides uh, why the combination of using imaging guidance and this and and the device can be very powerful in our practices um, you know for really getting you know adequate samples that'll be very usable for the pathologist you know one of the things that we have found in our practice is has been the tremendous growth over the past five to seven years and a lot of that is actually fueled um, initially by repeat patients. You know, many of these patients, as you can imagine, have to get multiple sequential biopsies to monitor treatment response, uh, to check their disease status. And as a result, I to this date can't think of a patient that's come to us for a procedure and then not come to us for their subsequent procedure. Um, once they come to us, they tend to stay because of the positive experience that they have. And that's really what drives a lot of our referrals now with our repeat patients. But one of the things that, that we did very early on, we were thinking about how do we want to build this practice? You know, being at a big academic center, we have the advantage of being involved with multiple interdisciplinary conferences. So we met with the hematologists 
um, and the oncologist and talk to them a little bit about what we could provide. Um, you know, and in, in certain situations when it's very challenging for them, we wanted to make sure that they knew that they had an option where we'd be able to get reliable samples. And once that ball got rolling, we've really seen our practice explode. Um, a lot of it has to do with the efficiency, which I'll talk about a little bit that the that the device really kind of helps amplify. Um, and we're able to kind of get a lot of patients through now. Um, but still, it's to the point now that, you know, at, there are times when we have a wait, you know, more than we would like for these patients to get in because that's how busy our practice um, has become now. You know, the other um, application um, for the device in our practice is for lesional biopsies in bones, um, specifically in the iliac crest and vertebral bodies. And it's going to mimic the coaxial technique that a lot of us are familiar with with the manual systems. But now we have the advantage of the, um, of the power driver to really help drive, um, you know, that efficiency. So what's a technique when we do these bone marrow biopsies? I always tell our trainees at the beginning, at the heart of everything is the consent. Um, not because we're obviously required to do that, but you know, to really kind of explain to the patient what they should expect during the procedure. For a lot of, especially our new patients that have not come to our practice before, many of them, as you can imagine, are very anxious, um, specifically because a lot of them might have had a poor experience or a not so favorable experience um, having these done at the clinic, um, in the clinic or, or, or at the bedside as an inpatient. And so really taking the time to kind of go through the consent, but then specifically explaining to the patient, we're going to be using a mechanical device. You might hear it, but actually it leads to our patients, you know, from our anecdotal evidence being a lot more satisfied. Um, you know, I think that, you know, explaining that to the patients goes a long way in really, um, you know, making them feel most comfortable when they get into the, you know, when they get into um, our procedural suite. You know, in addition to the standard consent, obviously we're gonna discuss if they have any allergies or not, if they're gonna get conscious sedation, we kind of go through that protocol to make sure that they've been MPO, they have someone to drive for the rest of the day, we let them know that we're gonna monitor them for about an hour after the procedure. You know, and with regards to blood thinners, I'll tell you with the majority of our bone marrow biopsies, a lot of our patients are coagulopathic or they're on various blood thinners. Um, and it's not necessarily from a risk benefit analysis, it doesn't necessarily make sense for them to come off. You know, to this date, we have never had a bleeding complication uh, with any of these bone marrow biopsies. Um, and so it's something that you can do very safely, um, you know, even if the patient does have, um, you know, an elevated INR or low platelets, uh, it's, it's something that can be done. Um, we can do these, uh, you know, obviously with or without imaging guidance. Obviously, if they come down to our suite, it's going to be done with imaging guidance. One could use either fluoroscopy or CT. We do almost all of ours with CT. Um, obviously, the patient is lying prone, so we can access that posterior iliac crest. And this is stuff that we explain to the patient um, that it, they're going to be lying prone on a CT scanner table. And, you know, a lot of them have had CT, so there's some comfort with that. We always want to start, I always kind of tell our trainees, you actually really want to start by trying to palpate that posterior iliac crest. Pretend like you're doing this without imaging guidance, right? Try to feel where that is. We use a grid in our practice to really to, to help with the localization. And generally for us, that grid kind of goes more towards the midline. And I'll, I'll kind of show you why, because we, you know, we have the luxury with imaging guidance in this device to take an angled approach to along that long axis of the iliac bone. So once we localize the area, we're obviously going to use sterile technique. So we're going to prepare the area and use our standard sterile technique throughout the case. Um, and now I'll show you a little bit here in a few slides about what it means to prepare the tray. But first, this is the device. It's actually, it looks very simple and that's great because it's very easy to use. There's one little kind of trigger button here that the only way the device is on is if it's actually depressed in. And by default, it's going to be off, which is a very nice safety feature of the device. Additionally, there's this really kind of clever um, and what I found very easy to use um, a kind of attachment for where the needle attaches onto the driver. And you, you'll see here, it's actually very easy um, to detach the needle from the driver. Um, you just pull this little part back and it detaches very easily. And one of the things that I really like about this is when the driver attaches to the needle, one, there's a really nice, strong tactile feel and there's an audible click. You know, oftentimes, you know, I, I think a lot of us who are so used to being in these busy procedural seats with trainees, we're so used to certain sounds, right? And if I don't hear that click when they're attaching the, you know, when they're attaching the driver onto the needle, um, I make, I, I ask them to verify that it's attached because that click is pretty much there every time. Uh, here are the two needle sets that you're going to come, that, that, that come with it. So this is going to be your standard coaxial technique that we use for that iliac crest or, or vertebral body lesional biopsies. 
And you can see that every one centimeter here is marked off on the needles, which is incredibly helpful. And then these are the two marrow needles that we use. So they come in two different lengths, um, a 10 centimeter and a 15 centimeter length. Um, you know, I would say for about 95% of our patients, we use a standard 10 centimeter length, uh, but every once in a while we go with the longer one. Here is what the tray looks like when we open it. So you're going to have this sterile drape um, up front, which actually I'll tell you of many of the kits I've used, I find this drape to be helpful. The, the circle is actually an adequate size. It's quite large and there's really nice adhesive on there. So it tends to stay on, uh, you know, very well. But if, if you don't tend to use these sterile drapes and you prefer you know, the standard sterile towels and stuff that are commonplace in many procedural suites, you can use that as well. Once you take that off, this is what the kit looks like. So again, we would we have our needle that we're gonna be using for the biopsy right here. This is the ejector rod that we're gonna use. And th this is the alignment device. And I'll show you a brief video about how these device, how these pieces of the kit all fit together. The other thing is then there's this kind of sterile bag that we use, this kind of covering, so to speak, for the driver. So well, the driver gets placed in this by someone who is not sterile. Usually for us, it's our anesthesia nurse or our, or our CT tech that, that, that'll be in the room. And then um, we, we, we pull this covering over and kind of secure it around the driver. So now we're sterile for the rest of the procedure. So standard technique, obviously, once we localize, we're going to use local anesthesia. Um, and I'll, oftentimes, um, our technologist at this point has started the sedation um, for using conscious sedation in our case. Um, and again, these can definitely be done without conscious sedation as well. Th this happens plenty of times in our practice. You know, I always tell our trainees, you want to numb really the two main sites of, uh, of, of discomfort for the patient that you can really help limit are under the skin surface. You want to give quite a bit there. And then you really want to give anesthesia along the periosteum of that posterior iliac crest. Um, so once that sedation, once the anesthesia has been given under the skin, we make a small skin nick with our scalpel, just something straight down, just to give um, the needle, you know, enough space to be able to rotate and for us to angle it in the patient. And then what we'll do is using intermittent um, imaging guidance, we'll advance our needle towards the posterior iliac cortex. And we really want to find the broadest landing zone that we can find on that posterior iliac cortex. And we want to go at an angle that's along that long axis of the iliac bone. Um, so we can really get some really nice core samples at the end of the procedure. One of the things I always, uh, you know, I always talk to our trainees about is when you numb initially and you have that one and a half inch 25 gauge needle, use that, you know, leave that in the patient after you numb and take a scan. It gives you an idea of what is your angle too shallow? Um, is it too horizontal or too vertical? Do you need to make any corrections when you advance a larger needle in? Once your needle is right along the posterior cortex, right before you, you activate the driver to advance the needle into the bone, I always tell our trainees, use that time to just put some gentle pressure down on the bone. See if your patient reacts. Are they in any discomfort? If you've given adequate um, anesthetic, they're not going to feel that. And again, these are just small things you can do to make the patient experience a lot more pleasant. Um, so I'll put some gentle pressure down on that bone. When I feel like it's it's firmly on the bone, the patient's not reporting any discomfort, you want to activate the driver by depressing the trigger and you want to advance the needle in. I tell people you want to aim for anywhere between around one and a half centimeters, somewhere between the one to two centimeter range. If you're paying attention as you're advancing the driver, as you go through the cortex, there's going to be some firmness. And then as you get through that cortex in that subcortical region, which is where you want to be, um, you're going to feel a little bit of a loss of resistance as you get in the medullary space. And that's really where you want to be, um, you know, to be able to, um, you know, to be able to get an adequate marrow aspirate. You know, once we get into that area, you really want to, I tell our trainees, you want to move as quickly as possible. You want to limit clotting that can happen from the marrow aspirates that, you, that you're obtaining. And then two, you know, patients, as you, as you aspirate and, and start to develop that pressure to get the marrow out of the bone, patients will feel pressure during that time. This is something that I warn them about before I do that during the procedure. Off, you know, they might be sleeping from the sedation, um, but even if they're not, I want them to hear it. And for me, this is the second time that they've heard it. This is something I always mention to them, um, you know, during uh, the consent process that you might feel a pressure sensation when we get into that area of the bone where we're going to collect the sample. Um, and again, the faster you can go, I found, the better the patient experience.
So once we get into that subcortical region, we want to begin taking our marrow aspirates. Once we've collected all of our marrow aspirates and given it, you know, for us, our pathology team is outside of the room. And so they are collecting the samples. Um, and so we're kind of going in and out of the room, um, you know, to give them the marrow samples. Usually we collect anywhere from three to four syringes, depending on what kind of tests and analysis they need to run. Once we do that in all of our marrow aspirations, we get a core sample. Um, the core sample, we advance the needle in about two centimeters into the iliac bone. So we want to make sure, again, we're along that long axis. So we're able to take that two centimeter throw. Um, they want a minimum of one cent, actually 0.5 to one centimeter is what they want as a minimum sample. But this tends to give us anywhere from a one and a half to two centimeter sample that isn't fragmented in most cases. It's a nice kind of solid piece, which is what our pathologists find to be the most useful. You know, it's nice. Like I said, there's those one centimeter markers on the needle. So and they're very easy to see. So, you know, at, at, as you're kind of advancing in, you you kind of keep your eye on that and um there's also a little guide on there as well that you can use if you want that to touch the skin as you go in two centimeters and out. One very important thing that is is something I always struggle on with our you know struggle with with our trainees initially when we're when I'm teaching them how to use this device is that in the way that the needle is designed for the marrow biopsies in order to get um, a nice long two centimeter sample you want to keep the the driver device on the entire time that you're going into the patient and out of the patient. I tell them that they should not release the trigger switch until the tip of that needle is outside of the patient. And that tends to provide the, um, the best samples. We use the ejector rod and the alignment guide, as I'll show you in a video here briefly, um, to remove the sample from the needle tip, and then it gets pushed out through the hub. We obviously, if they, that's usually the conclusion of our procedure at that point. So we'll, in, you know, standard procedure will ensure hemostasis. We hold pressure. Oftentimes you can push the skin down pretty hard and you can actually feel that posterior pelvis. So you want to try to push against that. I always tell our trainees, we're probably going to hold pressure for at least one to two minutes. It may be longer, um, you know, until bleeding is stopped at the skin surface. Then we're obviously going to clean and dress the patient and provide discharge instructions. Like I said, almost all of our patients, because they're, you know, especially if you're getting sedation, they'll they'll wait any, you know, anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour um, after the procedure. And the discharge instructions we're going to give them are written. But again, I kind of explain all of this to the patient in the consent part too, just so they've heard it, um, not only heard it, but you know, then they can read about it later on. So I'm going to walk you through this little um, demonstration video about how this device works. So as you can see here. That's our sterile drape that's going to get placed on the patient's sterile skin surface after you've done your prep on the skin. A, a nurse or technologist is now going to put the driver in. It's going to click into this kind of receptacle in the um, in the in the sterile kind of covering for this. And then again, the radiologist now, without touching the driver handle, will be able to pull this sterile covering over the driver and then kind of secure it in place. And now once this is done. The whole driver system and everything is sterile for the rest of the case. And, you know, again, this is only a one person procedure. So at that point, you'll be able to do all of it on your own. And so what will happen next is after the incision is made in the skin, the patient is numbed and we've used our CT scanner to localize. We're going to take our biopsy needle out. There's a covering that comes off of it. That little plastic piece on the on the edge here, as you'll see in a second, is our guide that you can move down. And you're going to advance the needle now. You're going to angle it as you need to, again, using the CT scanner to help guide your positioning. And then when you feel like you're along that cortex, again, the driver's going to click on. And then you're going to depress the trigger here, as you'll see. And you're going to want to advance two centimeters. And again, these are one centimeter lines that really help you see that. Once you're in and you feel like you've gone in about one to two centimeters, you're going to remove the inner stylet. And again, this this little black piece here, you pull back on it and it'll detach from the needle. I always tell our trainees, you want to try your best if you can doing that with one hand so you don't take any chance of losing access. We'll remove that inner stylet. And now I let the patients know you're going to feel pressure. We're going to do our aspiration. We're going to generate some pressure and then we're going to collect our marrow aspirates. Once we feel like we, we have our aspirations, we're going to reattach without the inner stylet, the driver to the needle. And now we're going to advance two centimeters. So again, you can move this device down here to a comfortable position, but you're going to advance in two centimeters. And again, the, the driver stays on the entire time until the tip is outside of the patient. Again, using the same technique, we're going to did remove the or detach the driver from the needle. Now we use this alignment guide that comes very handy, comes in the kit. It'll nicely click on to the tip of the needle. And now we're going to use our ejector rod. 
to gently dislodge the sample from the needle tip. Oftentimes, I tell, I tell our trainees, you wanna use your palm and just kind of gently tap down a couple times until you feel that the, the sample dislodges from the tip, and then it's just gonna gently glide out from the tip through the hub, and it, we, we usually deposit it on a, piece of, uh, on a small piece of gauze or on a tegaderm, and this is what it looks like. You usually get a nice, beautiful, long sample um, that we then go ahead and pass along to the pathologist, and that is the conclusion of our procedure. So just to show you what a picture of this looks like with when we use CT scanning. So again, you ideally, as you advance the needle in, you, you want to ideally come along the long axis of the bone here. So I always tell our trainees, again, place the grid in the middle, and then you're going to angle into the long, you know, into that along that posterior cortex. Once you hit it, this gives you a nice opportunity to take a long throw here for a nice two centimeter core. Um, and also, if you do need to reposition, this gives um, this gives you room to reposition. It's safe. It's completely away from the SI joint, from the sacrum, and so it's a very safe approach on how to get it as well. You know, this is a picture. You can see this is one of our manual needles that we use. Oftentimes when these are done with a manual system or without imaging guidance, because of the angulation and the pressure that's required um, that I showed on this slide, it can be hard to do that with a manual system I found. And so what happens is what people tend to do is they tend to go kind of straight down on it because you can generate kind of more pressure downwards. Or if it's, if it's being done blindly for safety reasons, oftentimes you'll see people take kind of a more lateral to medial approach because they know they're gonna hit the lateral cortex of the posterior iliac. And as long as you advance about a centimeter and you can measure that in advance, you know, you're not gonna hit anything too vital. Your, your backstop is gonna be the SI joint. Um, the problem with that, um, from my standpoint, though, as you can see is, if you come like this straight down or you come from the side, you don't have much room to take a nice long throw. And, you know, oftentimes you'll get fragmented samples because of the kind of continuous pushing down and different angles. Um, and so in this way, um, you know, if you go along the long axis here, um, you can really get some nice samples and both imaging guidance and the driver really help facilitate that. So what are some of the, the big advantages that I've seen in my practice? So when we do bone marrow biopsies, what you know when we do it with the arrow on control powered system you know compared to when i you know when we use our manual needles they're significantly faster for me and they're much much easier to perform you know from when i'm doing these on my own once i my, my time from putting the needle in the patient to numb the patient to collecting and depositing my core sample with the pathology team is under 10 minutes in almost every bone marrow biopsy when I'm using this device. So, you know, we can turn the rooms around faster. We can schedule multiple, um, you know, patients in our, you know, in either a half day or a full day slot. And we can do a lot of add-ons because they're so quick. Because the procedures are faster, um, you know, you, you tend to have less radiation exposure, you know, for the patient, you're not scanning as many times. And, and especially for the operator, if you're using fluoroscopy. Our patients, because we're going quicker, we know exactly where we're going. Um, we're able to collect our sample without kind of, you know, continuously pushing down in a manual technique. They report less discomfort. Um, and again, it's a shorter procedure time, you know, so for them, they, they can't believe they're in and out of the room that fast. We consistently have seen that we get larger, kind of more continuous samples, not these fragmented samples that we would get. And what we found is that's what, what really does result in, in having second or repeat procedures. And again, that's a big driver, you know, from our referral base, like I discussed at the beginning, a lot of times we get these patients because they failed at the bedside or in the clinic to get an adequate sample. So oftentimes, you know, patients get upset with that. The team doesn't want to have to deal with that. They want their answers quickly. So again, that's helping to really drive our referral base because they never really have to come back again, um, you know, based on our experiences. It, it, it's very often whether they get conscious sedation or not that they can't believe we're done, that, you know, they didn't feel that pressure and pain that they've reported to me when we've used manual systems in the past. That obviously leads to overall greater patient satisfaction. You know, they go back and they they tell the clinician that, hey, you know, I had such a great experience with this biopsy. That's how I want to have it done again, um, which is great. And I think, and, you know, I think that a lot of our fellows now would attest to this. Once you kind of, um, you know, kind of commit yourself to learning how to use it and, and, and getting trained in the device, it's really easy to learn, operate, and frankly control. I find it to be very precise, in a lot of ways more precise than the manual systems for knowing exactly how deep I want to go, how long of a throw do I want to have. Just to switch gears now, the other big use um, that we have in our practice is to do lesional biopsies, specifically in the iliac crest and vertebral bodies. 
like with the marrows, you always want to review your prior imaging to determine what's going to be the best approach to access the lesion, what's going to be the optimal patient positioning. Um, I always tell our trainees, you know, if you can, um, you know, spend some time at the beginning making sure that your approach is what you want it to be, the patient's positioned in the way that's going to be most comfortable for both you and the patient, you know, to, to, to safely collect a sample, that's going to pay dividends in the procedure, especially if they end up being longer procedures. Again, you can use CT or fluoroscopy. The vast majority of our bone biopsies are done with CT. At Northwestern, we actually have the option of six different access needle lengths, six centimeters, 10 centimeters, and 15 centimeters. And again, that's from the skin surface to the lesional edge. And so that's where, um, you know, based on where you are, you always, you know, you want to pick your needle um, appropriately. You don't want too long of a needle, but you also don't want too short of a needle. So if you're kind of in that for a six centimeter needle, if, if you're kind of measuring in that five to six centimeter range, you probably want to go up to the 10 centimeter one because, you know, as, as you all know, if you start with a shorter needle and you figure out in the case in your longer one, that, that's obviously very frustrating and not ideal. Again, it, we use a coaxial system for these lesional biopsies and the biopsy needle that that comes with each, you know, with each axis needle length in the kit actually allows you to take up to a three centimeter sample if you need to. I always ask our trainees to start with a one centimeter sample and then adjust accordingly from there, depending on how soft or firm the sample is. And, you know, this can be used for either lytic or blastic lesions. The initial process for a lesional biopsy is, is, is almost identical to the bone marrow biopsies where you're going to localize, you're going to use anesthetic, you're going to numb along the periosteum, um, depending on where you're going. Um, the difference, again, is the coaxial technique, the, the difference. So you have an axis needle that you are going to use to get to the lesional edge, and then you have your biopsy needle that, that'll, that, that it's meant to go right through it. Um, <clears throat> and again, there are nice kind of measurement markers on there that show you exactly how deep you're going. Um, in one centimeter in increments. Obviously, the advantage of the coaxial technique, it allows you to maintain access and it protects the surrounding tissues. And oftentimes, as we know, for especially heterogeneous lesions, we want to sample different parts of the lesion to really get, uh, to give the pathologist, um, you know, as representative of a sample as we can of, of, of all parts of the lesion. What I found that this system really allows is once you have your access, it allows, you know, repositioning tends to be a lot a lot easier and a lot more efficient. You can easily kind of angle your axis needle if the lesion you're, access, you're trying to get to isn't too deep um, to go kind of in, in different directions in the lesion, medial, lateral, superior, inferior. Um, additionally, sometimes we have to pull out and we can advance it to a different part of the lesion. And again, these are all, it's, it's much easier to do, I, I have found with this device. Again, I always say get one centimeter samples initially for some of the very, um, you know, dense lesions. I'm sure many of you know with the manual systems, they can be very hard to remove, um, you know, from a, from the standard manual systems. This device does make that that issue a lot easier. They provide um, different handles in the kit, um, you know, to be to to really be able to, you know, to allow your grip to be stronger, to be able to remove these more difficult samples. Um, but that being said, it's always good to start with a one centimeter sample, and then if it's a large lesion and you're easily able to remove the one centimeter sample from the system, from the needle, then you can obviously take, um, you know, bigger cores as need be. This tray is slightly different from the marrow tray. Obviously the sterile kind of covering is very similar, but here again, you have your access needle that you're going to use to get to the lesional edge. And then here is your biopsy needle. This will fit perfectly um, into this needle. Um, and this is the ejector rod that we use to, to remove the sample. The one difference is for this, when you use this ejector rod, you actually remove the sample. Um, the ejector rod goes into the hub and then it actually just comes and then you just push the sample right through the tip, just like you would in a manual system, which is very nice. And again, they provide various handles and such in the kit to be able to help, you know, to help remove any more kind of firm and difficult to remove samples. So what are some of the advantages that I've seen in my practice with use of the on control system? Um, you know, for these lesional biopsies specifically, it allows us the ability to get rapid access to difficult lesions. Oftentimes there are lesions um, that are at difficult angles. So, you know, if I have to take an, you know, an awkward angle from the side to get into like a lateral iliac crest lesion or something like that, you know, using a manual system can be very hard. You're kind of bending over. Obviously, if you have the device, you're going right in and out of the bone. And so it makes it a lot easier. And these more difficult lesions, especially very dense lesions, you're able to access and get very good samples. Again, because these, tend to go faster. You know, you're not having to kind of continuously check as you're kind of manually, you know, uh, moving the needle in. There's, there's a potential for redu reduced radiation exposure 
um, and again to the patient and operator due to shorter procedure times. We, we, we tend to see similar with the, with the marrow procedures um, that there's less patient discomfort. I find again, once you get used to it, there's very price precise control. You know, I always tell, you know, for these lesional biopsies, we always want to get one image if we're using CT guidance or flora with our, with our, with our biopsy needle actually in the lesion. Um, and so again, this precise control this, you could, you, you can really measure out exactly how you want to go. And the driver is very predictable once you get used to it for how you advance and how you remove it. Again, um, our patients report less pain to us after their procedure. They're overall much more satisfied. And again, I think it's once you get used to this, this device is very easy to use. So what are some of the common barriers that I've seen? You know, I would say especially with new faculty members um, or fellows that have used manual systems in their residency prior to coming to us. So one is they're used to the manual system. So there's obviously just a general lack of training. They've never seen this device before, you know. And so I think, you know, one of the things that 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 we do is we have our representatives um, at Northwestern um, from Teleflex kind of, you know, they come out, they they engage with our fellows. Obviously, with COVID, they've had to be a little bit more creative. But in the pre-COVID area, they would they they come into the hospital. Um, they'd bring, you know, kind of various simulations that the fellows could practice on and get really get a feel for um, how the device works and what the feel is and, and you know, kind of um, when you're advancing the needle. Um, additionally, we we actually keep a kit, a needle kit in our room. And so fellows can look at the, you know, they, they, they can, they get to, they get their hands on the needle. They can see what the covering is like and what are the components of the tray. And I think that familiarity goes a long way because once you start using it, trust me, you're going to, you're, you're, you're going to want to continue using because it, it really does make your life a lot easier. So what are some general tips for success that I've kind of, you know, these are things that I've just kind of accumulated through my usage over the years. Again, spend time during the consent explaining the procedure to the patient and what are the advantages of the device. I don't want a patient to come into the room on the table when it's the first time we've, they've ever been in, in our suite and they hear the driver for the first time. I, you know, there's no need for that. I, I'm a big believer in explain it to them clearly um, that the patients will see, they'll be able to put those advantages together with what you're telling them at the conclusion of the procedure. Always review the prior imaging. Um, to you know, look at the procedure notes, see if they had sedation, how much sedation dosing did they get? Um, you know, that's very important. A lot of times our trainees just kind of want to jump into these procedures, but if we're using, whether you're using imaging guidance or not, having, why not look at the roadmap, you know, before you start the, start the journey. Select the correct needle size, measure from the skin surface down to where you need to be. For a bone marrow, you want to measure from the skin surface to that posterior iliac crest. And you want to allow, again, about two to three centimeters into the bone to collect your core sample. So if your skin to cortex distance is hitting that six to seven centimeter range, you want to go from that 10 centimeter needle to the 15 centimeter needle. And again, if you're in between two sizes, um, always go with the longer needle. Once, you know, especially trainees, once they get started, and I had to fight this for me early on in my career is, oh, I can just adjust on the fly. You know, I just want to kind of get through this, but you really want, you know, the driver makes everything so much easier. So just make those positional changes earlier on, reposition early if you need to, because with any procedure, the further you get into the procedure, and if you're not positioned optimally, you're just kind of fighting yourself and making it harder. So you really do want to sit, if you're struggling, just kind of sit back take the time, have the patients to reposition, um, and that usually leads to much greater success. If they're coming to our suite and we're gonna be giving sedation, you wanna, you, you, you know, we want, you wanna be safe and mindful about the amount of sedation you're giving. We monitor our vitals. We have a sedation nurse in the room throughout the entire procedure, but you wanna give sufficient sedation that's safe for them, but that's obviously making them comfortable. We always start light. And then if for some reason that they're feeling any discomfort or they're they're still very anxious and wide awake, we might give them some more. But what I tell trainees is most important is give sufficient anesthetic. Numb along that periosteum, that's where you want to deposit quite a bit of it, and then numb all the way out and especially leaving a good amount at that skin surface. Um, and again, um, you know, that tends to lead to greater patient satisfaction. You want to get very familiar with how to attach and remove the needle from the driver. Um, again, it can be done with two hands. I prefer if you can do it with one hand, getting used to that because you can always keep your kind of your non-dominant hand then on your access needle, just practice not to lose access. Um, but you don't want to be doing it for the very, while I think it's very easy to do, it takes a little bit of practice to get used to it you know, the system like anything does. So I don't want our trainees doing that 
while they're in the middle of a case, right? This is why we 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 have a kit set up um, in our reading room. But even before the biopsy starts, while they're preparing the tray, they I always tell them, especially when they're early on, try attaching the needle to the driver and releasing it. See what that feels like, and you can get used to it. There are extra handles provided in all the kits um, that can again make it very easy to help remove difficult samples. So. Um, the device system is very clever. Like I said, they 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 have the alignment guide in there, so it, it makes it a lot, you know, it makes it really simple then in bone marrows to be able to dislodge that sample from the tip. You know, they give you these handles to remove these difficult samples. Use these things; they're there for a reason. And once you get more familiar with the kits, it'll make your job a lot easier, and you'll be able to troubleshoot, um, you know, a lot more effectively and more, you know, when you get into a more difficult situation in a case. If a marrow aspiration, you know, is unsuccessful, a lot of our patients might have, they've had treatment, they might have myelofibrosis, and so they don't have that much um, liquid marrow that we can aspirate. One, you want to image and you want to make sure that you're actually not lodged in the cortex or along the edge of the iliac cortex or the posterior cortex. You want to make sure you're in the medullary space. You know, the, um, the inner stylet in all of these needle systems, uh, both manual and powered, they always extend a little bit beyond the needle that you're going to be using to collect the sample from. So it's possible that your stylet slightly beyond the cortex, but your actual needle that you're going to use to access the sample is actually cortical. And so you're not getting that much flow back. So then you're going to want to advance further. Sometimes you just need to try to move into a different part of the bone, um, you know, to see if you can get a better aspirate. If all that fails, you have a couple options. And usually I consult with our pathologist depending on what they're looking for. You know, oftentimes they want a, a much longer core. So again, with this, with this system that provides you the ease and you know taking using imaging guidance and taking that kind of oblique approach along that long axis of the iliac bone allows you to take a longer sample if you need to um, or because of the speed with these cases you can easily go to the other side um, and we do that um, i oftentimes will try that in our cases when we have a dry you know when we have a dry tab um, and I would say in about anecdotally 30 to 40 percent of the cases, we're able to get a marrow aspirate from the other side. And again, reviewing prior imaging, you know, and, and prior procedural notes uh, can be very helpful. If you know, if you see on the last case, they tried on the right side and they weren't able to get aspirate, maybe try on the left side this time, um, you know, and you're only going to know that if you look at the procedure note. Sometimes for some of the lesional biopsies, because of the, the, the beam hardening artifact that we see with all of our needle systems, it can be helpful if you obviously remove the inner stylet sometimes for a couple of reasons. One, you can see where the actual, how close is your, is your access needle edge really on the edge of the lesion or was it the stylet? And then two, it takes away some of that artifact. So you can get a little bit better look, um, you know, at, um, at, at what your path is gonna be, especially for smaller, more difficult lesions. So what are some of the other advantages and strengths of the system? From my standpoint, I think that the way that the needle attaches to the driver um, is, is a huge positive of the system. There's a great, like I said, there's a great tactile feel once you get comfortable and you've trained on it. Um, there's a nice audible click. And so I feel like it, 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 it's very firm um, and I, it, it just leads to increased confidence when you're, when you're um, trying to get very precise samples. And you know that, that's something that, again, just takes some practice and experience. A couple of the other safety features that I really like are that the driver will actually only attach to the needle if the inner stylet is inserted securely. So a lot of times our trainees just kind of want to drop the inner stylet in. We always kind of advise them that can actually cause discomfort to the patient. You want to you want to actually put it in slowly, but then you have to securely tighten it, right? We don't want to lose stylet, and that's gonna you know as you can imagine as you advance, that's not going to work so well. So I like that the driver won't attach when our fellow is struggling to try to attach the driver early on in the year, I'll always ask them, you know, you want to make sure that the inner stylet is secured properly and screwed in properly into the needle. I love that the driver can't remain on, obviously, for safety reasons. It's only on when you're pressing it, and that's it. Um, if you're not pressing it, it it's off. Um, again, it, it's it, there's got a nice weight to it. There's a sturdy feel to it. You feel very confident. The access needles that come with the kit are large. You're going to get great core samples. Um, that's going to be great because your pathologist isn't going to ask you to get multiple samples. Um, they're not going to have, you know, you're not going to have to bring the patient back for repeat biopsies as often. So I think I find that to be a huge advantage. Um, the needle system is very easily seen on imaging. As radiologists, obviously, imaging is going to play a huge part um, in almost all of our procedures. And so this needle system is very easy to see on imaging. Um, it's also really easy to advance the axis needle to the bone when you're, you know, it, it, 
it's such a well-constructed needle that as you're kind of going down to the soft tissues, as you're gently pushing down, um, you're going to be able to get to the bone very easily. And again, that makes for less time with multiple imaging going back and forth in the room. So that's going to lead to less radiation, obviously. Um, and again, you're able to go faster and, and patients, taught to, in my experience, tend to tolerate it quite a bit better. So again, I want to thank you again for allowing me, um, you know, to share my experiences when the device, it's really for me really changed the way um, that I practice. It's made um, my job, frankly, a lot easier. Um, and, you know, I think that both my refers and my patients are really starting to see the benefits, um, you know, from using this device. Thank you very much for your time.